I'm really the shop for selling my phone supplies and since lately I've been into historical and antique furniture, I thought it would be kind of interesting to me to search and purchase an older piece and then mix it with my, I would say, mid-century modern style. I don't know, the juxtaposition of two different styles together side by side, I think there's something super cool about it. it just, I love contrast and I love experimenting. So, pretty much that very night I ran into this online. At first I was skeptical of whether or not this is an actual antique piece because I'm not too familiar with the fine details of historical furniture. But then when I met with the seller, she convinced me otherwise. The nails and the hand carving, this is all the telltale sign of a decade, maybe a century old furniture. And then when I got home, I became even more curious and so I began researching. Which led me to this, and then this, and then this. So the shelf actually had a glass door. It's an American made circa early 1900s solid oak bookcase or a display cabinet. So the plan is to clean it up, remove all the dust, the grime, and the oils that I might have accumulated over the years, uh, sand it a little bit, and then apply dark grits gel stain to it. I don't want to take away from what it originally looked like, I just want to bring it back to life and possibly, I don't know, preserve it a little bit better in the long run. It is utmost important to protect your hands. I am removing all of the easily removable elements from the cabinet so that I can work on them separately and make my life a little easier. And look at these amazing shelf supporting spoons. It looks like some of them do not match. The very first step is to clean furniture. It is recommended to use a cotton t-shirt like cloth and denatured alcohol. Cleaning in the direction of the grain of the wood, I have removed all the dust that accumulated during the years from every possible crevice, nook and corner, along with dirt and oils on the surfaces. Intermediately fold the fabric to present a new clean surface as you wipe and clean until your cotton cloth comes off free of dirt. Oh, and here are the imperfections that I would like to remove because they kind of bother me. A very sticky tack cloth helps remove any dust particles that might have been left behind. I promise I'm not sweating bullets, nor am I tired. Look how pretty the grain is. It almost feels like walnut to me rather than oak. And then once the piece is completely clean, in the direction of the wood using a 400 grit sandpaper, I remove the existing finish, or more like polish the wood really. You don't want to remove the finish to bare wood, otherwise the stain will not properly come through on the surfaces. And so then I switched to a 200 grit sandpaper because the previous one was a little too fine. Using a tack cloth, the dust left behind from sanding is removed. Then I realized that was stupid because a cloth dent in mineral spirits should be used first. It does a much better job on very dusty surfaces, followed by a tack cloth. I'm using general finishes, job with gel stain. Now if only I can open the can properly. And then I apply a thick coat of gel in the direction of the wood grain, one surface or section at a time, followed by wiping the excess with a cotton cloth and revealing the new stain on the wood.
By wiping a brush and mineral spirits, I can go back and remove gel access from intricate carvings and corners that are difficult to remove with a cloth. I think you can apply up to three coats, but the stain needs to be allowed to dry and lightly sand it in between each layer. The more layers, the darker the wood will appear. I still wanted the beautiful wood grain to come through as much as possible, and so I'm sticking to just one layer of coat. Heat the space as much as possible for your sake and the furniture's. Wood will definitely dry faster if it's not too cold. Now that the gel has dried, about 24 hours later, I can apply a protective top coat. And then I'm using a pretty brush to apply the first coat of top coat. I'm applying a very thin coat and, as always, working on one section of the cabinet at a time. This is possibly the second most relaxing activity out there. If you take your time, refinishing furniture can be quite meditative. It is recommended to apply three coats of top coat and to lightly sand it between. Here's an interesting shot, a comparison between the original finish, only a gel stain coat applied, and then the gel stain with the top coat. About 48 hours later, I'm using super fine Homex steel wool to lightly sand down the first layer of top coat. Then some mineral spirits to clean away the dust. Final layer of top coat. This cabinet will not be bothered too much. It'll just stand in the corner with its own boxes. So I'm hoping two layers of top coat will suffice. This is my personal tip. Staring at the piece from awkward angles where the light hits correctly can help you see better whether or not you've properly covered the entire surface with top coat. I've heard that the top coat tends to change the tonality of the wood quite a bit, but I had no idea it'll be this drastic. However, I really don't mind the way it looks now. I originally wanted more of a reddish hue and the top coat made it happen.